Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, and more specifically, we're going to be doing some long-term technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets. In this video, we're going to be discussing the bear market that Bitcoin has found itself in for the majority of 2019. We're also going to be discussing what I believe is the new accumulation phase that Bitcoin is currently entering, and we're also going to be discussing the all-important question that I'm sure, to one degree or another, is on everyone's mind, when is the next bull run coming? Because I'm sure if you guys were around for 2017, I'm sure you remember all the fun that we had making trades in 2017, and I'm sure we all want that to come back. So in today's video, we're going to be trying to get to the bottom of exactly when that's going to happen. But before we get into today's video, guys, if you enjoy the video, as always, definitely consider dropping a like, hitting that subscribe button, and smashing the notification bell, guys. It does help out the channel if you do it. Without much further ado, let's get right into it. We're going to start the video with a little bit of short-term technical analysis since the majority of people that watch these videos watches it, watch it the day it goes live. So we'll go ahead and do that. Just skip forward a few minutes if you're not interested. In yesterday's video, we discussed this pennant pattern, this kind of bear flag that Bitcoin found itself in, trading in between this downtrend and this uptrend. It broke below it and then got right back up into it. And currently, we've broken back below it again. Definitely not a very good thing for Bitcoin. And one thing I want to make very clear at the outset of this video is that since Bitcoin is very, very close to $6,000, $6,000 being one of the most important levels in all of Bitcoin technical analysis, especially at the moment since we're so close to it. One thing that you kind of notice about levels like this is a lot of times they tend to have this kind of magnetism to them, where when you get, where when you get rather close to them, the market ends up going to them. And sometimes it overcorrects a little bit and the market may go $100, $200 below it. In the cases where we saw a Bitcoin pull back to about $5,750 and $5,830 respectively. Typically, that's what you see. You'll see the market pull back to that level. Typically, you're not going to see the market pull back just a little bit above it. We did see this right here, but this was the this right here was the prelude to the actual proper bottom. And this was right after the proper bottom. So normally when we're seeing a proper bottom in a market, what we'll normally see is the market go all the way down to the level, not just kind of touch it, normally we'll see Bitcoin go all the way down. And at this point, I do think we are going to go down and test $6,000. And it's a very important thing that I get that out of the way at the beginning, because what we're talking about in this video is predicated on the idea that we do not break $6,000. I'm going to go ahead and make another video on what I think will happen if Bitcoin breaks $6,000. In this video, we're predicating this technical analysis on the idea that Bitcoin does not break $6,000, which I do believe is the most likely scenario. I would put about a 50% chance that Bitcoin stays above $6,000 and moves into an accumulation phase for the majority for the rest of 2018 at this point. Had you asked me that last week, I would have had a different answer for you. But with this massive sell-off that we saw in the last couple of days, that is now exact. that's exactly um, what I'm thinking right now. Anyway, let's do the crypto market recap and talk about the altcoins for a second. And then we're going to get into the longer term TA that I've been hinting at for the rest of this video. Bitcoin, depending on the exchange you're looking at, is trading just a little under $6,300 with a daily volume of around $3.65 billion. Definitely not a very large day. It's not a very high day for Bitcoin's volume, but that's to be expected because Bitcoin's basically just been trading sideways with a couple of gigantic big red, uh, big green and red candlesticks down here making kind of inverse Bart Simpson patterns. Not really doing a whole lot of um, meaningful subst uh, substantive uh, price action just basically trading sideways with a couple of little jumps. Not a ton of volume to write home about today. We are up about 1.21% over the last 24 hours, but as we can see on the hourly chart, that's simply because 24 hours ago we were down here and then we got up above here and now we're back down here. So actually Bitcoin, that that sometimes the change over the last 24 hours can be a bit misleading because you're only looking at two points the point right now and the point 24 hours ago, which is always what, which is why it's always a good idea to have a trading view account and come look at the charts because that can be a bit misleading, of course, not intentionally. Anyway, Ethereum is currently trading under $200. That is a big development. I have not seen Ethereum trading under $200 in a very long time, guys. Definitely nostalgic price levels, definitely price levels that I'm looking to get in on. I'm waiting for the altcoins to set a proper bottom before I start scaling into them because right now they are kind of just in free fall and I would rather see some kind of actual bottoming pattern. If you guys are interested in my take on the altcoin market, there's a video which you can watch in the top right where I get into that. But nevertheless, Ethereum's daily volume is trading, not trading, but hovering around $1.585 billion. And it's up about 0.84% over the last 24 hours. But again, that's not exactly accurate because Ethereum is down generally over the last 24 hours or so. This is just because of when those two points that I talked about were taken. Bitcoin's dominance is hovering just a little bit over 55%. Nothing really to write home about there, guys. If you're interested in my take on the Bitcoin dominance, I talked about that extensively in the altcoin video I just linked in the top right. So you guys can see my opinion there. One thing I also want to talk about is that Bitcoin's total market capitalization has gone below $200 billion. We have seen Bitcoin's, uh, excuse me, total market capitalization go below $200 billion. Not something that we want to see. We've, saw, we've seen Bitcoin come down to $250 billion twice, and then it came down to $200 billion. It looked like we were going to do that twice. Currently, we're below it. 
With this in mind, we did pull back down to about $191 billion the first time. We may see a very similar thing in a double bottom coming in on the total market capitalization charts here in the next couple of days. It's really going to depend on where and if Bitcoin decides to bottom here in the next couple of days. Anyway, I believe that's everything we wanted to cover on the on the coin market cap. I, almost, I always want to call coin market cap crypto market cap for some reason. Anyway, now that we've got all of the uh, and now that we've got all the daily things out of the way, let's go ahead and get on to the main point of today's video. That, of course, being our discussion about when this bear market is going to end, what is going to happen with this, this accumulation phase I've been discussing, and when the next bull market is going to be coming. Now, I want to preface this with when we're talking about long-term trends like this, and when we're talking about long-term trends in a very new and underdeveloped market, it's very, very hard to nail down exactly what we're going to be talking about. It's very hard to make it's very hard to make accurate predictions. So basically all we're doing here is informed speculation. Now, of course, that's basically all technical analysis is, but I want to give you guys that uh, that disclaimer up front that what I'm saying here isn't necessarily going to be true. Now, that's the same thing for every single video. It's what I believe. I think it's what's most likely. But of course, guys, we are talking about a long-term market and we do only have one data point, that being the 2014-2015 bear market to look at for historical price action. So we don't have a lot to go off of simply because Bitcoin is such a new ecosystem. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is the bear market. Then we're going to move into the accumulation phase and then the bull market, of course, in that order. I want to talk about this bear market because I've, I'm of the opinion that we are very, very close to wrapping up this bear market. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this video is predicated on the idea that we do not go below $6,000. If we go below $6,000, the bear market is probably going to drag on for several more months, probably on into the beginning of 2019 if we break it in this month or so. Of course, I, if we break below $6,000, we're probably going to see the bear market and the beginning of the accumulation phase put off at least three months. We're probably going to see that take much, much longer. And there is reason to believe that that may happen. It's not an invalid claim to say that Bitcoin is going to go below $6,000. I just don't personally think it's the most valid. If we stay above $6,000, on the other hand, though, I do believe the bear market is more or less over. And let me go ahead and explain why I think that. And it's kind of complicated for me to explain that without putting this disclaimer at the front. Also, the way that I typically define a bear market is seeing higher highs and higher lows, or excuse me, a bull market is higher highs and higher lows. A bear market is lower highs and lower lows. And what we're seeing right now is that we are setting high, or excuse me, lower lows and lower highs. But at the same time, I do still think that we are uh, that the bear market is wrapping up. And let me go ahead and explain why. What we saw at the end of 2017, up here in about December 14th to December 16th, we saw Bitcoin peak up here at around uh, $20,000. And what we saw here was that Bitcoin ran from $10,000 which it broke right here at the very beginning of December. And within two and a half weeks, it had added another $10,000. It took nine years. It took, well, it took about, uh, it took almost eight years for Bitcoin. No, it did take almost nine years. It took almost nine years for Bitcoin to first get to $10,000. And then within... And when then within 20 days of it getting to $10,000, it was at $20,000. We saw an insane amount of volatility. We saw a remarkable amount of volatility in the Bitcoin market and indeed in the altcoin market. The Bitcoin market is very, very volatile, but Bitcoin doesn't hold a candlestick to many of these altcoins. Even some of these altcoins that are very, very good projects like Ethereum. Ethereum had a very, very similar run up. Ethereum started 2017 at $8. It ended it roughly at $1,400. So this is a very, very new space. It's a very volatile space. And that's my point here is that one thing we've seen happen over the over over the course of this bear market is the volatility has been drop, has been dropping off in a very significant way. We saw a lot of volatility leading into the peak and we saw a lot of volatility volatility leading out of the peak. Some of these massive runs where we saw Bitcoin come from $6,000 down to 6 uh, excuse me, $20,000 at the all-time high down to the new low at $6,000 back up to $12,000. Those were extremely volatile mar those were extremely volatile movements. We lost about 66% of our valuation, close to 70% of our valuation when we actually pulled back and then we almost doubled our valuation in just a little under three Three weeks after we actually set our bottom and after we set our bottom. So we saw about a hundred percent return. We haven't seen that kind of volatility coming back into the market recently. What we saw in this rally is we saw about a 22% return. Now, of course, when we had this pullback right here, it was rather drastic. We saw a 30% re reduction in price action, but the kind of volatility that we've seen over the last three months or so does not hold a candlestick to the kind of a uh, uh, hyper, um, I don't know where I was going with that. It doesn't hold a candlestick to the kind of volatility that we were seeing at the end of 2017 and into the beginning of 2018. And a big reason why I think that's happening is because a lot of the people that were that, that were uh, moving this market and were trading this market and causing this market to move in the way that it was, they are, they're gone. The, There's so many people that have lost the market. There are so many people that have left the market. Rather, the, a lot of the people that were in the market 
they just straight up left or they just put their Bitcoin into a private key and shoved it in a drawer somewhere and said, okay, screw it. I'm going to come back in 10 years and I'm going to be a crypto millionaire. A lot of people are just gone and there's just not as much volatility. That's why we've seen the volume dropping off so heavily. This daily volume right here, that would have been a very, very, very bad day for Bitcoin's volume rather than all of cryptocurrency market volume just a little over nine months ago when we were hitting all time high. Let's see if we can get the chart up here and I'll show you. When we were hitting all time high, Bitcoin was regularly seeing uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20 billion dollar days in volume on just Bitcoin. Total market volume, I remember, was close to 50 billion dollars on a, on a good day. And right now it's covering around 10. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that so many people have left the space. The market is cooling off and the bear market is really starting to end because a lot of the people that were going to get screwed, let's be honest, they've already gotten screwed and they're already and a lot of the people that are going to leave the market have already done so. A lot of the people that are still here, you included if you're watching this video, and of course you are if you're watching this video, you guys are the ones that have the fists of steel who either you just got here, in which case I think you've just gotten into cryptocurrency at the best time and you could not have a better chance of getting into crypto unless you got into crypto at this stage of the bear market in 2014 or this stage of the bear market in the bear market that preceded that. I think this is an amazing time to be getting into the cryptocurrency space. But at the same time, we've seen a lot of people leave the space. And at the same time that some people have been coming, far more people have been leaving the cryptocurrency market because a lot of this valuation that ran up, that ran Bitcoin from a low down here at $3,000 in mid-September to $20,000 in mid-December, just a little over three months, Bitcoin gained like 600%. If we check our uh, ruler out here, about 600%. We saw a 600% gain in the span of about three months. A lot of the people that caused that rally are gone. A lot of the a lot of the weak hands, a lot of the people that a lot of the retail investors, they've been flushed out, and a lot of the people that were like that are just simply gone. And that's one of the things that has contributed to the low, the lacking of volatility. And that's one of the things that is leading me to believe that this bear market is wrapping up. And the lack of volatility is a big part of that. Let's talk about the accumulation phase now, which I do believe we are going into. Let me go ahead and give you a historical precedent and show you what an accumulation phase looks like. In the 2014 and 2015 bear market, I would consider basically all of this to be the accumulation phase. The time in between the bear market, which I would consider this to be the bear market, this right here to be the accumulation phase, and then what and then what followed that all the way up to $20,000 to be the bull market. That's about how I break down the 2014 and 2015 bear market. And like I said earlier on in the video, it's very important that we use what data we have, but at the same time, we don't have a lot of data because this is really the only bear market that we can look at. Now, of course, there was a bear market before this. Of course, Bitcoin was created early on in 2009, on January 3rd, 2009. The first block was mined by Satoshi Nakamoto. But at the same time, the market was very, very fledgling at the time. Indeed, it was very fledgling, fledgling in this bear market. So we have to keep that in mind as well. This is the only data point that we have to look at. But it is a data point that we can get value out of. And it's very important to study previous market history to get an idea of where the market is going. And one thing that we like to say here on the channel is that markets do tend to rhyme, but they will almost never repeat. And what I think we are rhyming with Bitcoin, uh, with this Bitcoin bear market right now, is that I think where we are in relation to this Bitcoin bear market relative to this Bitcoin bear market, I think we're somewhere right around here. And this might scare you because this level right here, this very important level that you see drawn on my chart, looks rather similar to $6,000 in the current bear market that we're in, which is why I say that we do have a very good possibility of going below $6,000, maybe coming down to three or $4,000 somewhere down here and trading sideways, then going up. That's definitely a possibility. In this case, I don't think we're going to because I think some things are different. But as far as where we are in relation to this bear market, I think we're somewhere right around here. And what we saw after Bitcoin came through this territory is that Bitcoin basically just traded up and down for the vast majority of 2015. It traded sideways in what I'm calling an accumulation phase for the vast majority of 2015. And a lot of the people that knew what they were doing and realized the potential that Bitcoin had and were able to see far enough into the future to realize the investment that they're making and the benefits that it would bring them, they saw this accumulation phase and they bought the hell out of Bitcoin. And they're the ones that made a lot of money because they were the ones that were smart enough to get in at the right time and then hopefully get out at the right time and walk away with their profits and be very, very happy men and women. And that's where I think we are right now. I think we're right around here. I think the bear market is ramping up. We just talked about why I believe that. I think we're entering this accumulation phase and what that means for what we're and that what that means for future price action is that I think the most likely scenario guys is that Bitcoin trades sideways for the next 3 or four, for the next 3 to 6 months. I think Bitcoin trades sideways for the next 3 to 6 months. It may set a newer high up here above $7400. It may not. Guys, it's very hard to speculate on stuff like that. It also very well may break below $6000. And don't say that I'm just saying okay, well Bitcoin could do XYZ and every other letter in the alphabet and I'm just going to be right no matter what. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I think Bitcoin is going to trade sideways. We can't really predict exactly how that's going to happen, but I think what Bitcoin is going to do is something like this. It's just going to trade sideways down here, hovering around $6,000, maybe up to $8,000, maybe down to $4,000, 
and then it's going to actually be kicking off the bull run early on in 2019. So let's go ahead and discuss the bull run now because a lot of people, obviously, one of the biggest questions in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is when is the next bull run coming, guys? I, I, have, I run a YouTube channel, so I know what kind of questions are very, very popular in the cryptocurrency space. And I'm sure you guys are also aware that this is a very, very uh, common question. When is the next bull run coming? And I'm going to go ahead and tell you when I think it's coming based on everything I've discussed in this video and based on many other things I don't have time to get to. And then I'm going to kind of try and explain why I believe this. I think it's coming in the first half of 2019. And I don't necessarily think, like I said earlier on, if you had asked me last week, I would have said there's a decent chance that it's coming very soon. But based on what we've seen the last week, I'm not as bullish. What I think is going to happen is that we're going to see the kickoff of the bull run happen sometime in the beginning of 2019. If you guys are interested in how I and how I define when a bull run starts, because it's actually very, very easy to see when a bull run is starting. I have done a video about a little over a month ago based on how Bitcoin started its bull run back over here in October. I laid out exactly how and why Bitcoin started a bull run right here and why this was the catalyst of it and why if you had looked at these technical indicators at this time, you could have basically called the entire 2017 bull run. And with that, we're going to be using that in our technical analysis when the next bull run comes. We're not quite there yet, but we're going to be talking about now why I believe the next bull run is coming and when I think it's going to happen based on a lot of different indicators and different factors. One thing that we want to talk about is, of course, something that's not even on the chart. The Bitcoin ETF. We can't talk about Bitcoin and we can't talk about a Bitcoin bull run without discussing the Bitcoin ETF. The Bitcoin ETF has been one of the biggest news stories in the cryptocurrency space. It is taking the it is taking cryptocurrency by storm, guys. Now, of course, there are some people that were talking about it back here before it started becoming a big a big news story back here in May, like Data Dash. Um, Data Dash has been. Uh, I forgot his name. Data Dash has been talking about uh, the Bitcoin ETF for a very long time, but the rest of the cryptocurrency space didn't really get on board with him and didn't really start agreeing with him and start saying, yes, 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 Bitcoin ETF. It didn't become as hyped as it was until about three months ago. And I really do think that's overblown. I also did a video, if you're interested, on why I think the Bitcoin ETF is blown a little bit out of proportion and why we need to be careful getting so hyped up about it. But I do nevertheless realize that it is a very, very important news story. And I also do realize that because so many people think it's a very important news story, it's going to be very important for price action. And that's one thing that you guys have to realize with cryptocurrency markets and any market in general is the the idea of mass psychology and the idea of what and the idea that uh, markets are basically a manifestation of of, of traders uh, opinions on the market. And that's basically all the market is. It's a, it's a manifestation of how people are trading. And then when you use mass psychology, you can get an idea of why they're trading that way. And then in a roundabout way, you can get an idea of which way the market's going to be moving. And one thing we have to keep in mind is the Bitcoin ETF. So what are we talking about with the Bitcoin ETF? Here's the thing with the Bitcoin ETF. Coming up on September 30th, that's the next deadline. They can push it off a couple more times, but the next deadline for the SEC to talking about the Bitcoin ETF, whether or not they approve it, deny it, or delay it, that is coming up on September 30th. And that's not very far away. That's 21 days away. That's exactly three weeks away, and we're going to have some news on that. And when that news story breaks, based on everything that we've seen happen, whenever Bitcoin ETF news comes out, we're going to see some big price action. If it's negative and we're trading down here around $6,000, that could be the catalyst that pushes us through $6,000. If it's positive, that could push us up above $7,400 and up here towards $8,500 and maybe kick off the bull run even faster. At the same time, if it gets delayed, it's probably not going to be a very big deal and it's probably going to crash Bitcoin just a little bit. But the reason I'm bringing up the Bitcoin ETF for the long run is that I do believe that no matter what happens, a Bitcoin ETF is going to get accepted. I'm a very big fan of the VanEck and SolidX proposal. I do think that it will get accepted. I don't see any reason why the SEC wouldn't accept it. I think it's a great proposal and it's in the SEC's best interest to accept it. I think they are going to accept it, guys. I do genuinely think that they will accept that proposal. I'm not talking, I'm not commenting on any other proposal proposed to them. I'm talking about that proposal. I think they are going to accept that one. Perhaps they will accept one that hasn't even been proposed yet or hasn't even been uh, brought to the public yet, but I do think they're going to accept one. And when they do accept one, not really the utility value of the ETF at once is going to kick off a new bull run, but rather the hype, which I do believe will come if the news of a Bitcoin ETF being accepted is broken. Simply the hype of that could bring Bitcoin back up, setting a new higher high and putting it back on course for a bull run and start bringing a lot of exuberance back. So keeping in mind the Bitcoin ETF, if the Bitcoin ETF gets per, uh, gets accepted by, by the SEC, which it has to, uh, whether it's going to either be accepted or denied by quarter one of 2019. And that's why I'm bringing that up. It's going to be either accepted or denied by quarter one of 2019. They can't push it off forever. They can push it off for a while, but it is going to be either accepted or denied. If it gets accepted, it's going to be very good. If it doesn't get accepted, they will inevitably end up accepting a Bitcoin 
Bitcoin ETF sometime down the line. Another thing we have to talk about is the backed deal. We I did a video on it. I know I'm linking you guys all over the place, but if you guys want my opinion on the backed situation with uh, ICE, then you can watch the video up in the top right. But really, the backed situation is a very, very big deal. We're going to see backed coming online, hopefully in the uh, ending in the end part of 2018. That was a very, very big news story that broke and not a lot of people paid any attention to it, even though I believe that was one of the biggest news stories of the year. And I do think that that going live and that getting a lot more press coverage coming into the end of the year and the beginning of 2019 is definitely going to be one of the catalysts that can help Bitcoin go back on a run. And guys, I can sit here and talk all day long about what I think is going to happen, but I, I think I've made my point here and it's really hard to kind of put into words my gut feeling and I've and I built my gut feeling through doing technical analysis on markets literally every single day. I do mean literally by the Merriam-Webster definition, not literally figuratively. I mean literally doing technical analysis every single day for the last year, you get a gut feeling. And I'm telling you guys what my gut feeling feels right now. My gut feeling is telling me that we are going to be seeing a bull run starting by quarter one of 2019. That's my prediction. Whether or not I'm right or whether or not I'm right or wrong, I guess we'll find out. If I'm wrong, come back onto this video and come make fun of me. I will be more than happy to laugh along with you guys. I'm only human after all. That's a great song. But anyway, guys, that's basically going to wrap it up for this video. Tell me in the comments section down below, what do you guys think? Is the bull run coming sooner like I previously thought before Bitcoin's hopes of a bull run got completely dashed by dropping $1,100 in one day? And one thing I want to point out is that I do believe right now is a very good time to be buying. I do still stand by that video. And I do believe, and I did back here have good reason to believe that a bull run may be coming soon. At this, at this point, though, after Bitcoin dropped $1,100, that definitely kind of put a uh, damper on my parade and definitely rained on my parade. But anyway, guys, like I was saying, tell me in the comments section down below, what do you think is going to happen with the Bitcoin bull market? Do you think the Bitcoin bear market is mostly over? Do you think we're entering that accumulation phase, which I was talking about? Are you going to be buying Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies during this accumulation phase? And when do you think this bull market is coming? I think it is going to be starting at least in 2019, although I am a little bit more optimistic and I think it's probably going to be starting sometime in quarter one of 2019, somewhere roughly around there. Of course, plus or minus a couple of months, guys. It's very, very hard to accurately predict these things with 100% certainty. In fact, it's impossible. But anyway, guys, let's get a conversation going. Also, if you want to get a conversation going, a great place to do so is the Crypto Jeb Discord server. We have a little over 1,200 members, and I absolutely love chatting with you guys in there. If you're interested, link to join in the description down below. I do try to welcome every single person that joins. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this extra long video today. I want to thank each and every single one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.